Hello and welcome to another update video about XRP. So on the XRP chart today, lots of profit taking hasn't broken support yet on the shorter time frame. First of all, I wanted to talk about the larger, the bigger picture, the larger time frame. Yeah? Um, certainly the, the bigger picture chart, the larger time frame does allow for new bear market, well, new bull market highs. Yeah? So it is technically possible. Also, if we talk about relevant bullish support regions, yeah, especially after the um, February 20 or March 2020 low to the 21 high, if I draw the FIBS, um, then if we look for the 78.6 FIB level, that was never broken here, 21.2 cents. I'm using the log chart because on the linear chart, they were they were desperately well, they were completely broken, right? So, but on the on the log chart, um, the chart seems to adhere to a triangle um, structure, and it seems to me that we can recognize here on the XRP chart better patterns on the on the log chart. Yeah, um, depends always on the coin. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning more to the log chart these days on some of these coins because you can recognize the waves better. And on some of these, especially on the bearish charts, um, not saying that XRP necessarily is a super bearish chart. It's not a great chart, I have to say that as well, but uh, there are like lifetime downtrend charts like ICP. On these charts, I, I like to use the log chart more these days, seems to be a bit more reliable. Nevertheless, this is XRP. So let's talk about different wave counts. So let's talk about a bullish wave count first um, on the bigger time frame, yeah? and which levels need to hold that XRP could go to new all-time highs. So we've got here of the um, 2017 low, yeah, here basically from here, we have a possible five wave move up. Okay, so I've got a, um, I've got a wave one, I've got a wave two, I've got a wave three, I've got a wave four as a triangle and a wave five. This is a wave one. And we could say that this here was a wave two this is the low in March 2020. Yeah, but what happened after that? And this is where the chart gets a bit strange. That's why there are better charts out there um, that give a clearer picture. The problem is that the move up into the 2021 highs, let me take that out again and I'll zoom in a bit. The move into the 2021 highs, that was not an impulse, okay? It was a three wave move, which is not great, which is not great, which is also why I count the move up here at the moment as part of a diagonal. So anyway, it could be a one, two setup and another one, two setup, but I don't like to count this as a five wave move, okay? Nevertheless, you know, it could be a wave one, maybe as a diagonal, okay? And then the wave two to the downside here and the third wave could happen. So basically like that, wave one up, wave two down and a third wave could be unfolding. It now is relevant that on the shorter time frame. The relevant support levels hold to make that work. We're going to talk about that. However, there is also still on the bigger time frame a clearly bearish scenario that allows for one more low. Absolutely, that is still not off the table. I just want to show you the bigger picture first so you can understand the lower time frame. Because it is possible to count, yeah, this as an as a wave one, absolutely. Um, but we could say due to this move up here into 2021, because this was not clearly bullish, it didn't make a new all-time high and also, so other coins did, and also it's a corrective move up. So we could say, all right, hmm, what could it be? It could be a triangle, right? So why not have this as an A wave of a wave two? Basically that this correction is still unfolding. This wave two correction was never finished in 2020, but it's actually going to be somewhere here and that this is an A wave, a B wave, a C wave now, this rally, then a D wave down and an E wave up in a B wave, and then we could come down and see. This is still a possibility on the chart, right? Nothing that we need to focus on primarily now with the with yesterday's move up, but if support levels start to break again, which they can, certainly can do on this chart due to this structure, which is not unlikely. Um, now I'm not suggesting it's going to go down to one cent, that would be a bit ridiculous. Um, but it's something we need to keep in mind from a risk management point of view, all right? So, but as long as bullish support levels are holding, the focus can be on higher in the short term, because now we go to the daily chart. And the reason I'm saying that is due to yesterday's breakthrough resistance. However, 
uh, we haven't broken the 94 cent level, which was here sort of a bit of a cluster of previous resistance. Let's first at the higher level look at the, diff the different resistance levels here on the chart. We've got the um, yesterday's high together with those spikes back in 22, here at around about 94, 95 cents. Above that level, we have small resistance at $1.2. There's a, there's a swing high here back in 2021. And above that level, we have a cluster of resistance around $1.30, $1.35. These are structural resistance levels. Now, looking at the uh, wave count, the, there is a potential bearish count. I just showed you that how that would fit in looking at the bigger picture. So we have here an ABC. Um, but also in the ABC count, it is still likely that one more high is at least happening. Um, but again, relevant support levels need to hold. If, if relevant support levels hold now, uh, don't hold on the uh, smaller time frames, we're going to talk about them now, then this would be quite bearish directly, right? So obviously, all this upside that can happen needs to, um, well, we need to hold those relevant support levels. Otherwise, it is quite bearish because this is not an impulsive chart, okay? I cannot say that often enough. Do not be surprised if charts change, wave counts change. They do, especially on the XRP chart. Um, we had a few other charts now where wave counts obviously change in short term, um, on the smaller time frames, especially, yeah? especially on the smaller time frames. But there's no surprise. I mean, I've stressed over the last few weeks that most of these altcoins are currently moving in diagonal structures. Morphing and changing wave counts is completely normal um, on the um, on smaller time frames in diagonal structures. Okay. Okay. Um, now the bullish count suggests that in January 23 price bottomed and we had a one, two, three. In this wave three, there should ideally be one more high, and then a wave four down and a wave five up. So we're going to talk about the relevant support levels now. Zoom in, go to the four hour chart. Okay, so I gave you for this wave C in wave three, uh, relevant short term support, that's 66 cents. So it seems we are maxing that out. Um, at the moment it's holding, yeah, which is good. Um, so that really needs to hold. If we break below 65, 66 cents actually, if there is a sustained break below 66 cents, we only rallied in three waves. Not a disaster, because it could just be, it's a corrective move up anyway, within a diagonal. So if we don't get one more high, then we haven't got an ABC structure here, but a WXY. Then, however, this support level gets relevant. And if th then we are basically moving up a wave degree and we say, okay, we already completed the third wave, we're already in circle wave four. Support goes down to 56 cents. But if that breaks, yeah, I don't see anything clearly bullish anymore. Yeah, I mean, even this is, for me, still a questionable chart, but we can focus on higher as long as support levels hold. Uh, but because it's moving in three wave structures, it's a less reliable chart. But then here, 56 and a half cents is um, the fallback support. If 65 breaks, 56, but that's it. I, I, and below that, yeah, we have structural support at 45, but then I don't see any, a clear, I don't see a clear path then anymore to the upside. So that hopefully helps you understand how the relevant support levels fit in. We've got 65 cents as bullish micro support. Below that, we basically have an understanding that, okay, wave three is probably finished. Uh, wouldn't be great, but okay, we can still give it the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, maybe we're in this fourth wave. That, however, looking at proportions should take a while to play out, okay? So it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, but that's my best assessment on the extra P chart at the moment. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership and also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.